Welcome back to Hashtag Real Estate. And if you've just joined us, we're taking a look at investing in estate or gated communities. We are still in studio with Jamie Lee uh, Gardner, who is the founder and CEO of Estate Living, and Louis Martin, who's the COO of Estate Living. I mean, looking at some of the discussions that we've had before we went on to the break, we're talking about the advantages of estate living and some of the return on investment from an investment point of view, the benefits thereof, and the trends, uh, most importantly, that we we see. Um, Luis, I mean, before we went to the break, we were actually breaking down, you know, the trend that we're seeing in terms of retirement living. Yes. Um, that more and more South Africans are now starting to invest in. You had actually made an example from um, somebody within their 20s or their 30s uh, being able to actually get a return. So like let's say right now there's an, um, somebody in their 50s, um, perhaps in their 60s, um, that is watching the show that actually wants to get into this investment from a retirement point of view. Um, do they also get as much returns as the younger generation would? Um, well, it depends on the structure of that. If they're going to use that uh, property as a primary residence, so if they're looking to sell up and move into a retirement community, um, they're, depending on the scheme that they follow, whether it's a sort of sectional title retirement um, system, you know, the home-based care services or a life right product, it, that just really depends on how they choose to wrap their, uh, their, their retirement. Um, I think nowadays a lot of the retirement schemes you can buy in it, you know, you can buy in and live from 55 years old and you know they say in within the retirement community moving at a slightly younger age settling and building relationships with your you know fellow uh, you know, homeowners um, is a is is a more productive way in which to to do that shift from into retirement. Um, what we we're also talking about is a pure investment side. What I mean there is a, a scheme like, say, Shoreline Sabaya down in uh, KZN. You can buy in it in your twenties. Um, you're not going to live there. It, it's the, the age restriction on it is 55 and older. So from 20 to 55 you know, you've kind of got a bit of a guaranteed market. Um, retirement, there's a need in the community, an international need for retirement products um, at various price levels. Um, so there is there is a different type of way in which you can invest your money within the community. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about how you structure your retirement living options and the big debate between a sectional title purchase and a life right purchase. And I think it's very important as a buyer to do that research thoroughly um, and to speak to all parties to get the best possible solution. Mm. I for mean, you. from an ordinary man and woman on the street, where do they get these opportunities or these projects to be part um, of these estates, whether retirement, um, from an investment point mm. of view? Um, yeah, uh, where would they find the information? I have to do the research. State yeah. living. You have to do the research. So we have found that um, there, there generally was a lack of information around all of these opportunities, um, any community living environments from normal estate living right through the way to retirement. So you've got to do your research. Um, we put out a lot of articles, information, research, stats, demographics around, um, around all of these communities. So it's very important to do that. Read articles, um, Google it, you'll see there's, there's loads of opportunities in terms of content. I mean, we write loads of content continuously so that we can educate the market. Yeah. You've got to do your research to find the, the right investment and the right lifestyle for you. Mm -hmm. You're also chatting or you consult a lot with um, developers um, in, in, in the sector. Yes. What are you seeing um, on that front? In terms of trends? Yeah, in terms of, yeah. terms of trends. Uh, yeah, um, I, well, there's definitely a shift towards hospitality. I think yeah. that developers are offering premium. It depends, obviously, of which developers. And the area. Yeah, so location. different developers play in different spaces, different price entry level spaces. But the high end guys are definitely working a premium product, hospitality based, concierge services. Uh, you know, you walk into your house, you're almost walking into a hotel. Um, you know, it, it, and then you obviously have different price brackets. So the lower mar end of the market, also still high quality product, um, but there it's a, a sort of more about the numbers. Um, high, you know, what's it the term we always use for that? Um, volume. Volume or mm. critical mass. Uh, where your levy structure is more stabilized and there they're partnering with other organizations so there you get your appliances included there's talk of insurance products that you can get included um, so so it really just 
But again, it all goes back to hospitality. You know, you just really see that hospitality drive. Mm. So just a note on that as well. So with that hospitality, you'll find that a lot of the developers are partnering with major hotel groups. So it's it's they're bringing the the residential expertise. The hotel group is bringing that hospitality expertise, and together they're growing effectively growing that investment for you as an investor. There's also multi generational trending, yeah. um, which is quite a bit. And this is where estates are offering a multi-generational offering. So basically a cradle to grave opportunity. So you can buy in at a smaller unit, stand, you know, smaller unit as a part of maybe the sectional title scheme within that. And you grow and your property needs grow, but within that community over the years, where eventually you will have the opportunity where you can retire within your own community or bring in your mom and dad. They can retire in the same estate as you, but not inside your own, your 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 property. Yeah, <laughs> together, but <laughs> yeah. together but separate. Together but separate. Yeah. Uh, give us a sense of um, this this gated community and how big how big it is. Um, uh, what I'm trying to get here is in terms of um, investment opportunity and um, the size um, of it. Is uh, are there any figures we can talk mm -hmm. to? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. I mean, there's different communities themselves are different. You know, you've got up to 300 units. Are you talking about the number of yeah, units? Yeah. So I mean, a smaller communities got 150 to 300 units. Um, larger communities have in excess of 3,000 units. It really, and they're mixed, you know, that's where Jamie talks about her mixed, uh, her multi-generational. Mm. So there, maybe you're buying in from a pure investment in a studio or one bedroom apartment, which you're renting out, or you can buy a freestanding home, you know, all the way to a retirement product. I mean, a place like Val include a, they've got a life right retirement product that they do with Evergreen. So there you've got everything from a, a studio pad all the way across to a gentleman's farm all within one yeah. 900 hectare property. But there are just in terms of the whole entire community and it's growing there are 6,750 gated community secured. opportunities, secured community opportunities yeah. in South Africa. Okay then from there now there's government with the um, mega projects coming up and social housing uh, mm. space that is coming up does that qualify as estate living as well? It depends on how it's structured. Mm. So if the, those social housing developments, and I think it's very important to note that, that there, there needs to be given value into the social housing. There needs to be space for families uh, to be outside, to enjoy a parked area for their kids to play on the swings, uh, you know, effective uh, removal of refuge, uh, you know, a mix of properties catering to different needs, schools that are affordable and close by, job opportunities, transport, uh, and all of these factors, whether you, and there are a lot of developers that are playing in that space, you know, mm. um, you look at Chris Mulder, they're, they're taking what they learned from a Teeson Island, a beautiful premier development, and they're pl putting that into a more affordable environment where people can have access to a good quality standard of living mm. um, that's manageable. Yeah. No, thank you, ladies. We've run out of time, unfortunately, but I appreciate you coming and sharing that good insight thank with you. us. Thank you. So welcome. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Do join us in the conversation on Twitter at Real Estate BD TV and email us your questions to realestate at bdtv.co.za. And that's it for today's episode of Hashtag Real Estate. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.